When writing Chinese, Zhongwen, you have two options: simplified Chinese, jian ti zi, or traditional Chinese, fang ti zi. Why are there two options? This is because of the long history of Chinese writing, which can be dated back to the Oracle Bone Script, Jia Gu Wen, around 1200 BC. Simplified Chinese characters, on average, have fewer strokes than traditional Chinese characters. Simplified Chinese is used primarily in mainland China, Singapore, and Malaysia. Traditional Chinese is used primarily in Taiwan, Hong Kong, and Macau. To this day, there is still a debate surrounding the two Chinese writing systems, as people are arguing over which one should be used. From stuff brought up about practicality to stuff about culture, I'll be discussing this debate today in this video. I'll be talking about some of the talking points I've been hearing from both sides, and I'll even slide in my thoughts on this whole debate at the end. So without further ado, let's begin. Supporters of simplified Chinese often emphasize how much easier it is to learn simplified Chinese compared to traditional Chinese. I mean, after all, as I mentioned earlier, simplified characters do have fewer strokes than traditional characters. But what does that actually mean? What is a stroke? Strokes are like the lines and curves that you write out. Each Chinese character consists of a certain amount of strokes. The number of strokes needed to write a character is calculated by how many times you have to lift up a writing utensil when writing out said character. Here, take this character for example, Shu, which means tree. This character has 9 strokes, counted like this. There's also a specific order in which you must write out the strokes when writing out a character. But let's be real here, who actually follows stroke order? Since simplified characters on average have fewer strokes than traditional characters, they take up less time to write, and are also less complicated to write. This certainly lends simplified Chinese an advantage regarding efficiency. And nobody's disagreeing with that. Both sides of the debate agree that it's a lot easier to write out simplified characters than to write out traditional characters. Even people in places like Taiwan, a place that primarily uses traditional Chinese, often use simplified characters as a sort of shorthand to save time. And personally, I'd rather write out this Li over this Li any day now. However, traditional Chinese supporters often refute this by claiming that people type more nowadays than they write. Typing is arguably a lot faster than writing. And there isn't much of a difference between typing simplified Chinese and typing traditional Chinese. But why is that? Well, in order to type out Chinese, you will need a keyboard with all the Chinese characters laid out. However, that will be practically impossible, since there are thousands upon thousands of characters. So, what's the solution? Use the Latin alphabet to write out the phonetic form of each character. In the case of Chinese characters used in Mandarin, Putonghua, this system is called Pinyin. So when people type out Chinese characters, all they need to do is remember the pinyin, then type it on the keyboard, and out comes a bunch of different characters they can choose from. And regardless of whether a character is simplified or traditional, the pinyin stays the same, hence why there isn't a difference between typing simplified Chinese and typing traditional Chinese. Putting that to the side, there are also arguments regarding the ambiguity of both simplified characters and traditional characters. Take the following traditional characters for instance, Shu and Zhou. Both of these look rather similar, right? Well, what if we simplify them? Now, they don't look so similar. Here we have a case where simplified characters are less ambiguous than traditional characters. However, this can happen the other way around. Take the following traditional characters for instance, Qian and Gan. As you can see, the two look rather different in traditional form. But what if we simplify them? Then we will end up with these two, which look pretty similar. Here we have a case where simplified characters actually cause more ambiguity. There are many other arguments surrounding character shape and form, but I'm going to stop right there and move on to other talking points. Let's talk about 
culture. People who defend traditional Chinese claim that preserving traditional forms is preserving culture and tradition, which is important. However, people who defend simplified Chinese try refuting this by saying something like, well then why aren't we writing in the oracle bone script? Well we don't, because Chinese writing has been evolving for thousands of years. And they are correct. As I mentioned at the beginning of the video, Chinese characters have a very long history. But I'm going to also side with traditional Chinese a bit, and say that traditional characters do hold a more cultural and traditional relevance, since most traditional characters have been around for much longer than simplified characters. Even in mainland China today, a place that uses mainly simplified characters, you can still see traditional Chinese being used in the display of ancient artifacts in the Forbidden City. While we're still on the topic of culture, some people on the traditional side claim that simplified Chinese is destroying Chinese culture and that it was the evil communist's plan all along. But contrary to popular belief, the CCP wasn't the first to simplify Chinese characters. Even the Kuomintang had their own plans for simplification in the 1930s. Yes, that's right, the KMT had their own plans for simplified characters. The reason why they didn't do this was because of opposition to the plans for simplification within the party. The Japanese also simplified their own characters. Yes, Japanese uses Chinese characters too, they call it kanji. So yeah, the communists weren't the first to come up with simplified Chinese. Also, I forgot to mention earlier that simplified Chinese has also helped increase the literacy rate in China, up to 97%. That's pretty impressive, considering that before simplification, it was at a low 20%. Now you could argue that Hong Kong and Taiwan have higher literacy rates than mainland China, and they use traditional Chinese. But you do also have to kind of account for the fact that A, mainland China is huge, and B, mainland China's population is huge. So yeah. But at the end of the day, does this debate really matter? I mean, if you already know simplified Chinese, then it shouldn't take you that long to learn traditional Chinese and vice versa. In my opinion, it really shouldn't matter which one you use, there's no way we're going to convince every single simplified Chinese user to completely abandon simplified Chinese, or convince every single traditional Chinese user to completely abandon traditional Chinese. I mean, whether you use jian ti zi or fan ti zi, we're all using han zi to write zhong wen, and you know what? That's all that matters, in my opinion. But I don't know, these are just my ideas. So for now, I'll conclude my thoughts here. Thanks for watching and, oh yeah, I recently opened up a new Discord server, so come join that if you want. Oh yeah, and please like this video and subscribe, I kind of don't like saying that, but it's also important that I say that, so I'll say that from now on. I also recently opened up a TikTok account, so go follow me there. And, oh yeah, Merry Christmas to those who celebrate! Yay! But anyways, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. 再见!